So I think if you're a coach and you have a coaching program, there might be people in there that are just not ready to change. Even if you, you have the right strategies, like you ask those questions, you focus on their beliefs and shifting their beliefs, they just will not budge. And that can be a challenge. And I think for, you know, definitely when I was a newer coach, that was a little bit more of a challenge because I was in the, the lack mindset of, I'm just going to take anyone and everyone into my programs. I'll work with anyone. I'll fix you all, right? Even when I was doing health and wellness. And I think looking back, that got me in, I don't want to say it got me in a lot of trouble, but it definitely created more conflict than good. Like it created more lack in my life than abundance, even though I was taking on more people. Because those people were not niche specific. They were not necessarily ready for coaching. And so then I was kind of running around like a chicken with my head cut off, trying to figure out how to serve all of these different people's needs, as opposed to really focusing on one clear outcome that they, they wanted. And so now when I'm showing up for coaching, I'm really clear about who I do and do not want to work with. And I think I don't want to say it's a challenging thing because I think anybody can step into it, but I know in the past, some of my clients have felt resistance around that because they're like, Oh my God, I'm going to tell somebody like someone's going to come to me. They're going to fill out my form. We're going to be on a discovery call. And really like you've told people like, no, we're not the right fit. I'm like, yeah, not only is that saving both of us wasted time, energy, effort, money, but it's also an integrity because I'm not going to take on a client that I don't really feel excited to work with who I know is given me some red flags and is not my person and that's okay. And now when I'm like bringing on new people, whether it's in my programs or in one-on-one -on -one coaching, which I don't do a whole lot of anymore, I have certain ground rules that I give people so that I can create clear boundaries and expectations. So first of all, there's a couple of principles for success of like, always know your outcome. They've got to take action. They've got to be paying attention to their results being willing to change because if people are, are not open to the possible, not saying that they're going to always like dive headfirst into the breakthrough, but they've got to at least come in with the expectation that it's not necessarily going to always feel fun and good. There are going to be moments where they're going to have to step into something that might feel a little uncomfortable, focusing on excellence and living in gratitude and integrity. And those are kind of like the NLP six principles for success. And then the other big thing that I really speak to very early on in any of my programs is this idea of cause versus effect. Like you want to be at cause. So a lot of times when, you know, certain people will come into a group coaching program or you're not really screening people, they'll always be like those handful of people who ask a lot of questions, but they're disempowered questions. They want all the extra attention. They're sending you emails. They are, they want you to build their business for them. You know, they're just in, in a constant state of like, overwhelm and panic and survival mode really was, is a great way to put it, right? And so a lot of times those people are living the majority of their life at effect, which means they're looking outside of them for, they're finding reasons why things aren't working. Well, this isn't working because, you know, my mom was mean to me when I was little. Or, you know, I guess I'm just like overwhelmed because like the tech never works for me and I'm not a techie person. Like it's never their responsibility to make that change. They don't see it that way. And those are people that even if they come in saying like, I'm ready for change, I can't help that person at all until they get at cause, until they get to cause, until they start to take responsibility for their own business and their own results. Because like as a coach, it's not your job to fix that person. It's not your job to build that person's business. It's your responsibility to deliver on your promise, hold that space for them and help them get to that desired and result that whatever your course, product, program or service has said, this is what we're doing. And I know Tony talks about this too, Tony Robbins, that in the past, he's like, I used to take people through those like individual breakthroughs and he's like, I would kick them through the door, kick them through the breakthrough. And I remember being at Date with Destiny and there was actually this one woman who was extremely resistant and kept coming up with all of these reasons. This went on for an hour to the point where like 5,000 people are legitimately yelling at this woman, like, sit down, you're done. It was getting like real intense in there. And we were all kind of surprised that Tony was just allowing this to happen. But he was really giving it his all. And he said, listen, I used to kick people through the door when they weren't having the breakthrough. And what I realized is that that doesn't last. I did that for some people like who were, you know, smokers back in the day. And 10 years later, this guy came back to him and said, you didn't program me right. <laughs> okay. 
And Tony was like, what are, you, what? what are you talking about? He's like, you know, 10 years ago, you helped me quit smoking or whatever the amount of time was. He's like, oh, okay. He's like, and I'm smoking again. So you didn't program me right. And Tony's like, well, how long were you not smoking? He's like, well, I stopped smoking for three years, but then this external circumstance of his life happened. He's like, and I started smoking again. So it's your fault. You got to fix me. You're not, you're like a liar. And he was like, it's because I tried to do it for him and kicked him through the door versus providing the space for him to either choose to have the breakthrough, choose to take full responsibility for his result or not. And so as we're sitting there in this room of 5,000 people, this woman is going carrying on about why she can't get to the next level because of like all her past traumas. And, and I mean, the things that were coming out of her mouth were like, oh my God, lady, like, you know, she was very significant driven. And Tony was like, sit down, I'm done. I'm done with you. He's like, guys, I really wish this could have been an incredible breakthrough so that you could have all watched that. But this is almost more powerful. This wasn't a breakthrough. This was a warning. Oh man, the whole room was just like, <gasps> a warning. Can you imagine being called a warning by Tony freaking Robbins? I mean, the, the energy of that room was so uncomfortable. And I remember him saying, I know for a lot of you people pleasers, you're going to be really tempted to go over to this woman and comfort her and, you know, make her feel okay about what happened because you are feeling uncomfortable because you are feeling embarrassed for her. But if you do that, you will undo all of the work that we just did because you will validate her bad behavior. We were all like, oh my God, this is so intense. We we're all like, I just like feel icky. Like all of my whole row, we we're all like, oh, this is so awkward. But he was right. He was right that that was what she needed. She needed to be called out and not reinforced for being at effect because she was not willing to take responsibility. She just wanted to take up space and get attention. And it was like one of the, the cooler and more impactful things to watch. But I think, you know, when we look at coaching, we often do have that temptation to save those people who are at effect in our coaching programs. And I think when we get into a habit of trying to answer every single question in our groups, perfectly finding all the right answers, I don't know about you, but I noticed early on in my coaching business that when I would do that, all of a sudden, those people who were at effect would take up all the space in the group. Like they were just the energy sucks. The people who actually were the people who I wanted to work with and serve and connect with who were crushing it, they didn't want to show up in the groups anymore. They didn't want to show up to calls because they weren't getting the value that they needed because these other people were being given all of this attention for bad behavior. I've actually started to notice this because uh, anyone can sign up for my Samba program. And we do actually have a no refund policy, but we do kick out a few people behind the scenes because I notice in the first three, four days who is going to be an energy sucker and ruin the environment or the progress everyone else can make and behind the scenes we kick them out and I've not talked publicly about this before but I'm sharing it here <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's so important to kind of realize that I know now from running this program over two years who I do not want in there we've had a few people in there and uh, the program is 12 months so at some point they've left but if I notice in the first few days somebody is like I'm like, yeah, what's a red flag? <laughs> yeah, the red flags. It's, yeah. it's like, it's asking questions, certain types of questions where I say, they didn't watch the onboarding video. They didn't read the welcome email. It's almost like they are annoyed that we are not holding their hand and doing everything for them. And it's literally just been two days since they joined the program. I'm sorry, it's a 12-month program. <laughs> You're not just supposed to see progress right away. And then we kick them out. I think that's so powerful. And like you have just saved yourself and your team and that person a lot of frustration. Yeah. Because that's the person, that's the type of the person that comes back six months later and goes, I, I want a refund or I want to leave. This isn't working because they're not at cause. It doesn't matter. They could literally be given a million dollar strategy on a silver platter. No, they wouldn't do it because they were looking for someone to do it for them. Right. But I loved what you mentioned about boundaries. So let's say you're someone is a newer coach or someone who hasn't figured this out yet and people are really kind of calling on them and expecting them to answer every question and solve every problem. What do you say to them? Well, first I would ask them what type of boundaries they set up front 
because it could just be finding those people of the boundaries. Like one of my courses is an evergreen course and it's not group coaching. And so, you know, I jump on there once a month for live Q and A and occasionally I'll pop in and, and answer some questions. If I see that like same question coming up again and again, and I'm just like, okay, well, it's just, I'm going to help them more if I could just answer that right now instead of waiting two weeks for the live Q&A. But it is a community-led group. And so when people start tagging me in things, <laughs> I have um, another Facebook page that's Team Hey Jen Casey, and that account will go in and just kindly remind that person like, hey, Jen does not answer questions inside the Facebook group. She will be on live on this day. Make sure that you can either be there live or on the thread provided, drop your question. So we'll put, do that, those types of things now. In the beginning, when people were, you know, out of control and I didn't set boundaries, I think that really comes down to, I mean, for me at least, what I would do is I would shift the way that I'm responding to those questions by not directly answering all of those questions and giving them those reframes. Like where I said before, you know, those people were like, I'm stuck, I'm struggling. You know, they were not taking responsibility and like whoever started that energy, it just started to snowball. And so thankfully I was like, okay, we gotta, we gotta cut this off right now. So I was able to say, okay, that's not how we show up in this course. And not just like, you know, wagging my finger at them going like, you're not allowed to say the word overwhelm. You're not allowed to say this word stuck. You're not allowed to say the word struggling. I'm like, you can choose to say them, but it's not going to serve you. And here's why. So let's just like, as a group, agree that this is going to be a space where when you show up to ask questions, you ask them from a place of looking for solutions you ask them from a place of, you know, you're allowed to be stuck. You're allowed to need clarity. So let's find better ways to ask those questions and really stepping in as a coach and helping because it's just a lack of education. It's their mindset. They don't know how to show up. Maybe they've never been in a group coaching program before. So really teaching them early on the best possible ways to show up in that program. And I think you can pretty quickly identify, there's probably gonna be like, depending on how many people are in the group, at least one person, maybe two, three people who really get it, who really click in, and just throw all of your energy towards those people and encourage them and like privately reach out and thank them and support them and let them know that they are a leader in that group and that they are showing other people because when you give those people a little bit of encouragement, they wanna step up. They want to help the overall group. They get excited that you are personally recognizing them. And I think those are the types of people, especially if you've got like an evergreen program or some kind of ongoing membership or even a 12 month program, those are going to be the people that with your encouragement will set the tone for the group and prevent it from going down the path of people going and complaining and, and being over the top to, you know, people being more empowered. Mm. It's almost like rewarding the positive behavior instead of the bad behavior. Yes, because we oftentimes, especially as newer coaches, that's the thing where people will end up not being clear about how to set those expectations. They are freaking out because they're being tagged 10 times in a day by the same person. It's like, you know, I remember early in one of my courses, we had like a, we were like, we'll get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. On weekends, it was a little longer. And there was like one or two people, it was like 115 people in this group, one or two people that took all of the energy of the group, took all of the space of the group. I'm like, it's 150 people. No one else can get a word in edgewise. This person would be like, ask a question. You don't answer it within an hour. Hey, did you see my question? And we would purposely not answer them. And they would leave all of this stuff, tagging, retagging, bumping the post, bumping the post. Other people in the group are seeing that and they're going to start to notice, is that being rewarded? And so as a coach, you've got a model. You've got to lead by example. It might be a little painful for those of you who are people pleasers to not answer that question, especially when you're getting 50 notifications about it. You just want it to go away, but just don't answer it. Just pretend like you're not on social media. Those are not your office hours. And people will start to get it and they will start to respect those boundaries. Because if you're not respecting boundaries and you're teaching them about how to show up as a coach, they're not going to know how to hold space and create boundaries for their clients. So if you feel uncomfortable doing it for yourself, just realize that you are actually serving them by creating better boundaries. So true. Very true. So Jen, how do people find you online? What's the best way to follow you? So I am everywhere on social media at Hey Jen Casey. I'm really hanging out a lot on Instagram these days. Um, and then my website is heyjencasey.com as well. Mm, great. So we'll link this in the show notes as well so that people don't have to, uh, especially if they're listening on, on the go. Jen, 
It's been a pleasure. We can talk about this forever as, as Tony Robbins fans, both of us and NLP. I think it's amazing how you can uh, shift people's beliefs with simple metaphors and making them realize that this is just a story, this is just a belief. And by shifting their belief, we can help a lot more people make a change. Absolutely. Go to sig.com forward slash 343 to find links to Jen Casey and the show notes of this episode.